Hello AACPS staff and welcome back to our second Minecraft education tutorial on using the coding tools. In our last tutorial, we talked about the make code just enough to kind of get familiar with the workspace and the various tools and how to navigate that. In this tutorial, we're going to get to know our coding agent a little bit. So one of the things I said in the last tutorial is that when you use the agent teleport to player command, that your agent can defy the laws of physics. Wherever you are, it can pass through barriers to get to you in an instant. That's not true the rest of the time. The rest of the time, you have to be mindful of barriers and build into the code how you plan for your agent to navigate those barriers. For example, I have built a very small wall in front of my agent here. You'll see that we have just three glass bricks, and they are enough of a barrier that my agent will not be able to navigate around them unless I specifically code it to do that. So let's take a look at exactly what I mean. I'm going to open my coding tools here and I don't need to teleport my agent. What I want my agent to do instead is move. So we're just going to use the move forward and I'm going to change one over here to five. So I want my agent to move forward by five places. Great. I'm going to click start. And what you're going to find is that my agent will successfully move forward by one pace before it meets that barrier and stops. So the barrier prevents it from completing the code as is, which means, as I said, I need to code in how it is supposed to navigate this barrier. For example, I can code it to go around the barrier. I can code it to go over the barrier, or I can code it to destroy the barrier, depending on whether or not this barrier is actually a part of my build. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to open up my coding tools again. And this time, instead of telling the agent to move forward, I'm going to tell it to move up. So sometimes when we talk about coding your agent, people will use things like, well, other than the teleport, it has to follow the rules of physics. And that's not really true, because if I were to simply click start right now, my agent would move straight up in the air by five blocks and stay there. So it can hover against the laws of gravity, but it can't pass through obstacles unless teleporting to the player. So I'm going to tell it to move up by, I don't need it to go up by five, just by one. Now I'm going to have my agent move forward. So I'm going to right click on this, choose duplicate, drag this into the second position and change it to forward. Now I'm ready to have it move forward by all five paces that I wanted it to. And then I'm going to have it move back down because I do want my agent to be down on the ground. So once again, I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to place this in the final position there and I'm going to change up to down. So let's check the code that we have. When I click start, my agent is going to move up in the air by one block. It's going to then move forward by five blocks before moving back down to the ground by one. Let's click start and see how I did. And now you'll be able to see that our agent did in fact complete that series of steps. Let's take a look at some other options that we have. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to teleport my agent right back to the position that it started in. So I'm going to move these out, just drop them over here to the side in the workspace before placing the teleport back in and bringing my agent back to where we started. Let's see another option to have the agent navigate this barrier by breaking through it back into our coding tools. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have the agent move forward by one space, forward by one. And now what we want it to do is destroy the block in front of it. So when we go into our agent menu options here, if we go down to actions, you'll see we have things like place, interact, destroy, till, and so on. We want that destroy. We want it to destroy what is in front of it. And then we're going to use a second forward, but this time by just four. So we're going to have it move forward by one block, destroy what's in front of it before moving forward by an additional four blocks. So five paces total 
but it will destroy the block in the middle in order to pass through that barrier. Let's click start and see how we did. There we have the exact same series of steps accomplished by our agent, but of course we had to break that barrier. So if that barrier was important to our build, we would have preferred to use the command to tell our agent to go around it or over it instead. Let's see one additional option for coding your agent, and that is having your agent place blocks for you or build for you. And the first thing that we need to do in order to have our agent build is talk about the inventory. So I'm going to move over here near my agent and I'm going to right click on the agent to open the inventory. Down here in the bottom half of the inventory screen, you're looking at my inventory. This is what my player has available to it at the moment. Starting with the row at the very bottom, this is what's known as my hot bar. These are the different tools or build materials that I could access by clicking on one through nine on my keyboard right now, with that glass block being in my uh, position or slot number one and being the active tool that my player is currently using. But then I can also access all of these additional tools in the inventory by dragging them down to my hotbar. For your agent, the active slots are the very first ones here in the upper left hand corner. So I can use a very simple command to have my agent build with these oak wood planks. If I want to have it change materials and build with other things, I need a slightly more complex command telling it which slot to choose from before it places that block. So again, we're gonna stay pretty simple and we're gonna have it just build with the oak wood planks. And so all I need to do is place them in this first slot in the agent's inventory and we are ready to go. So now I'm gonna close out of inventory and I'm gonna open up my coding tools again. We're gonna remove the active code and instead we're gonna use some other codes. So let me clean up my workspace just a little bit here. I'm going to go back into my agent tool and I'm going to scroll down and choose the place forward command. Now, as I said a moment ago, this command doesn't contain any specifics about what material it is supposed to use. So what the agent is going to use is exactly what is in slot number one, those oak wood planks. Single command here. Let's click start and see this action performed. One simple block placed. The agent didn't move at all. Let's go back in and add a couple of additional things to see how a string can come together for a, a series of commands. So now what I'm going to have my agent do is I'm going to have it move and then build. So we're going to have it move uh, not forward. I'm going to have it move to the left. I'm going to have it move by one and then it's going to place a block forward again. Then I'm going to repeat that exact series of steps. So we're going to choose duplicate and duplicate for placing. So now I have two series here. It's gonna move left and place a block in front of it. Then it's gonna move left a second time and place a block in front of it. Let's click start and see what we've created. So now we have a very similar wall to the glass one that our agent had to navigate around the first time. But there is actually an even easier way to complete that series of steps. I'm going to go into my coding tools one last time here. And I'm going to take out that second series of moving to the left and placing forward. And I'm going to replace this with what is known as a loop. So I'm going to come down here in my green menu option and select loops. The great thing about loops is that you can have your agent repeat a series of steps without you having to manually build it. So I don't have to keep putting in move to the left by one, place forward, move to the left by one, place forward. I can choose repeat, drag that up to the on start, and then move the move to the left prompt and place forward block inside of it. Now I'm going to change this from repeat four times to 10. So now what we should expect to find is that my agent moves one step to the left, places a block in front of it, and then repeats that series of steps 
10 times. Let's go ahead and click on start to see these actions performed. And now we are beginning to get a wall built by our agent with us coding it instead of having to do this series of steps ourselves. Let's try adding one more layer onto this. So I'm going to open my coding tool one more time. And now I want to have my agent move up and begin um, building a second level onto my wall. So I'm going to choose move up by one, but I don't need to put that inside of the repeat prompt there. I'm going to put it above so that it's going to move up by one block before it then moves on to the other series of steps that it will repeat 10 times. I don't want it to move left because it would not be building on top of the wall that we currently have. Rather, what I want it to do is move to the right. So let's go ahead and click on start and see if we got this right. Okay, so we did all right, but because we had the prompt to move to the right before building, you can see that we've offset one um, block here. And this is where we get into the concept known as debugging your code. If your agent does not do exactly what you had wanted it to do, you have to go back into your code and look at the order with which you have, or if you have the wrong blocks included, and so on. So one of the things that we would have needed to change in this particular code is we would need the prompt place forward to be above the prompt to move right so that it placed a block before it moved and then we would have had a block there on the end. So debugging your code is a very common thing for you and your students to need to do and this is where that problem solving comes in because they have to stop and say why didn't my agent do what I wanted it to do and debug the code before prompting the agent to move on to the next series of steps. So thank you for watching our second tutorial on getting to know the coding agent, how to get it to move and navigate around the world, how to get it to destroy blocks as well as placing blocks and using loops.